Hi, good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for November 6, 2023, 6 p.m. Good evening, administrators, audience members. Thanks for joining us and council members. Uh, Ms. Garner, hard to see you. If you would call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Graham. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Cook. Absent. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Rodewald. Here. Six members present. All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Graham. Father, we thank you for this wonderful city in which you live and all the wonderful people you've given as our neighbors. We ask that you be with this body as we uh, discuss the uh, business of the city. Let everything be best for the citizens and for the city itself. And so we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice, for all. Come on, that's right. All righty. Moving on. I will need action on the uh, regular scheduled uh, council meeting for uh, October 16, 2023. So moved. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Roadwall. Any discussion on those minutes? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Graham? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Those minutes are second. accepted 6 0. All right, then moving on, we'll need to accept the minutes for the special Show meeting me. for October Sorry. 23rd, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lindsay, and second by Ms. Eggleston. <clears throat> Any discussion, Council? No. All right, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. This was the special meeting, right? Correct. Uh, my second was Eggleston, so Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Uh, abstain. I was not at that meeting. Okay. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. All right, those are accepted 501. All right, thank you very much. And moving on to communications tonight, we have a couple things to go through uh, tonight. Mr. Matt Mills from the Tecumseh uh, Local School Board is here tonight. He uh, asked to be added to the agenda tonight. He had some uh, comments. Uh, you know, just wanted to speak to council as a whole, I guess. So, Mr. Mills, where I know there was some shuffling going on there. You are. Mr. Mayor, can well, you have him stand at the front so you capture it on camera? Sure. Matt, do you mind going this way? You want me to go to the front? Sure. Just like high school. Yeah, I wasn't ready to put it in front of you. Don't worry, we won't shove you in the lockers. Oh, yeah. I didn't say my address for everything. Thank you, guys. That's okay. a great guy. Yeah. Um, Matthew Mills, 285 Teller Drive, New Carlisle, Ohio. Tonight I'm speaking as a member of the Council Local School Board of Education. I'm not speaking for all of them, I'm speaking for myself. Um, so I'm here mainly to talk about the development that's going on behind New Carlisle Elementary School. I um, want to make sure that the council heard the voice of the. Um, I'm actually going to pick up my jacket up when it's hot. Um, I want to make sure the council heard the voice of the board, or at least the perspective. Thank you. And then the district was at least represented, and um, they had some public comments made about the development in general. So, if you could, I included some population information because I think this is important. If you guys turn to page three of the packet that I gave you, you will see that there is a geographical boundary of the district. We're going to be Carlisle, Bethel Township, Clark, as well as some of Pike Township. Uh, what you see in blue in that attachment is anybody who has a student or who lives in the area would have a student that goes to New Carlisle Elementary School. <clears throat> Everywhere in orange does not go to New Carlisle Elementary School, and yellow is obviously the city limits, and so they go to New Carlisle. If you go back to the front page, you can take a look and you can see some population data information that's based off of the 2020 census, so it might change. It might change. You can see total wise living within the Tecumseh School District, we have over 19,000. Um, 13, 1,300 of that is in Pike Township, the rest is in Bethel, uh, Clark Township. New Carlisle has around 5,500, Park Lane, 4,200, and then other areas within the county, within the county. <coughs> we get down a little bit more, 
just people that are living in the geographical area represented by New Carlisle Elementary School. New Carlisle is the minority of people serviced by that school. The reason why I was saying this is because this is not just a New Carlisle issue. It is a community issue and it impacts people outside of the city. So that's why I'm here. I just want to be a voice for all my constituents as well. So going on, um, kind of the reasoning for this, if you guys start going to page four of the packet I gave you. Sorry, I didn't have a PowerPoint. But I, think I, to page one. I kind of want to highlight current buildings and give you guys an idea of some of our concerns. So page four, you'll see is Donaldsville Elementary School. Um, there's no homes behind this building, and the ones that are surrounding it have clear separation or in front or are very far off the property line. At the end of the next page, you'll see elementary, uh, this is um, Med, not Medlake, I'm sorry, um, Medway Elementary. Truth be told, we actually don't have students that go to the district to go to that school. It's um, subbed out to preschool. Clark County uses it. Still our building, we're still responsible for it. If the future becomes the students to go there. Um, you can see again, a couple of houses behind, clear separation, they're pretty far from the property line. Any of the ones that are kind of closer are in the front. Um, and we have some fencing around our playground area. Next page, page six, that is Parkland Elementary down in uh, You can see that there are no schools behind this building. Um, and the ones to the side are pretty far off, and there's clear separation. I didn't go to every house, so I can't tell you that there's a fence there, but it's, it's far enough away. Next one, page seven, is the high school and the middle school. Again, similar picture. We have one house behind the high school, pretty far back. There's a lot of separation between it, and then the houses that are in front and to the side of the middle school, there's clear separation there as well. Okay, the next page, and this one I wanted to show just because this one was a school doesn't exist anymore, it's a property um, that we still own, um, but this was Park Lane back in Park Lane, back in 2006 before it was knocked down. You can see that there are no homes behind this building. Um, there's even a crick that separates it, and the home that's off to the side is way far away from the <coughs> building itself. Next one, and this is probably the one that is going to be most like the new development houses in terms of being next to school, uh, Old Westlake. Again, this was picture, this is an aerial pic taken before it was knocked down in 2006. So there are homes that are surrounding this. Really. Um, I did go through, and there is a fence, whether it was there before or after the building was knocked down, I don't know. But today there's clear separation between those houses and that property. Um, go to the next page, and you'll see an aerial view of New Carlisle Elementary School next to the property that's getting ready to be built or houses that are going to get built. There's an existing tree line. This graphic says fence. I can confirm that there's not a fence. I went there this afternoon just to make sure I wasn't making fabrication, but there's no fence there. There is pretty good separation. Um, back behind our property, we have our chillers, our generator, our dumpsters, a little outbuilding. A lot of that stuff is right next to the property line. Um, and then you can see the houses that do exist there. There is an existing fence, at least on that um, side that's um, bordering Bayberry. Uh, the other side, those are in front of the building and not quite as close. Next page, this is my handy work. Nobody made this some time that I did it. Uh, there, that's 294 homes overlaid over top of the development's plans. Um, shows the playground, shows the retention pond, basins, so on and so forth. Um, if you look at the plans, at least the way that I read them, that tree line goes away and there's no fence that gets put there. So we're going to have homes that are right <coughs> after our property line after this is done. I know it's going to take a while, but it's still going to be there. Probably got a little, probably got a little over the top of the pools. I want to show some tools there to show, hey, there, there are going to be people that are going to build their homes. They're going to put a pool in the backyard. Um, and I'll, full, full disclosure, the, the pathways that are showing coming into our property, or the school's property, they're a little bit bigger than they're actually going to be. So that's a little um, misleading. I just want to be clear on that. 
So going back, uh, some conclusions. Um, there are both going to be close to 300 homes. 25 of these homes will be adjacent to the school property. There's no barrier or fence shown. And currently, the development plans are showing two sidewalk pathways terminating into the school property. Um, so, request from the uh, Tecumseh local school board member. We'd really like to see a fence installed along the top property. Um, we'd really like to see the developer pay for that fence. The development is introducing safety concerns for us that aren't there today. It's something that. Yeah, I'm sure we could absorb it. We could find out something else to cut, or we can, you know, do something else where we have a lot that we already have to do with the development coming in general. So we're just looking for some help, some support um, to have this put on the developer. Same with sidewalks. Again, I know nobody can force anyone to do anything. It's more just to help us out. Um, I did some math. So if we were to put a fence, it's about 200 linear foot fence. I don't know what type. I mean, that's based, That's a six foot tall tenured fence. Around 75 to 200 thousand dollars, or 100 thousand dollars, same with the concrete. Be about a thousand linear feet of concrete to get us connected to existing. That's 200 thousand dollars of cost, roughly. That's my estimate. That only adds less than one percent to the cost of each home. These homes are estimated to be about 300,000 less than that. Split that amongst the 294, increases it by less than 1%. I think it's like 600 bucks. That's not going to make these homes um, <coughs> uncompetitive to other markets by raising it 600 bucks. You can pass that on to the uh, buyer, and they'll never know. It's, it's not a huge increase in cost. It, it's keeping your constituents in mind more safe. These homes could have dogs, no fence, here comes the dogs, you know, like kids. Um, we have a higher chance of people accessing our property, vandalism. I mean, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, I'm just giving you guys examples of what could happen. Um, so that's, that's really it, that's what we're here, we'd really like to see the fence there. Um, we'd like to see you guys work with us, help us out. Um, if you go to page 12, I want to show you guys an example of an existing school that had a development going around here. And this is local. It's in um, Huber Heights. This is in the Carriage Trail development. You see Charles Huber Schools before it was built. That was in 2004. Go to the next page. That's 2010. It's being built. And then go to the next page. That is it today. Houses all around, but separation. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if that's their property for the developers. I don't know. I'm not going to speak to something I don't know. But that's a clear example of separation between the building and, and the developments. So really, in, in closing, um, I thank you for your time. You know, the members of council and administrators for to come here tonight. Um, the last thing I want to point out was the very last page. It's a little blurry, but there, this is a picture and a snapshot of the sign from in the town. That's a circle T that comes a logo on the Welcome to New Carlisle sign. I know you guys support us. We're just asking if maybe you can show it and help us out and work with the developer to get events work with the developer to get some sidewalks. So you guys have final say in this plan. I think it's approved. And uh, I appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Mills. Council, any comments, <coughs> feedback, questions? You said there was a fence around it? I originally thought that there was a fence along the property line. I didn't walk the entire stretch. Location is accessible from the road. There is not one. But there's a tree line the entire way. Separating it. Which location? And no fence, what, like behind the school? There's no fence behind the school currently, no. Okay. There never was? I can't say if there ever was, but there's <coughs> one there now. But there's also a farm field, not 294 homes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, Mr. Mills, is, is there uh, access 
for children and pets and whatnot now? Do you have a problem with them coming on the school? I mean, not, not, I mean, not a problem, but do you see them there now? No, we don't. Okay. But what? there are fences at the adjacent properties. Okay. Along our property. Not, so, so, not all of them. So do you... Do you well... Drake doesn't. I'll agree with you. Going down the, the other side, though, the Bayberry, Bayberry side, side yes. they, they have them all, yes. <clears throat> but that's also in front of the school, not behind, not beside. I noticed on your drawing where you had put some pools, mm -hmm. assuming people would buy would have pools put in. Uh, those particular properties would have to be fenced uh, because of the pool around the pool. They do have to be fenced around the pool. They have the same it ordinance for that. Has to have has to have a six foot barrier to be added to the pool itself. The uh, but. And most people has dogs would more than likely fence in their yards. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I understand you correctly, you want to fence on the property line of the school and the development. Somewhere within there. Either their and, property, our property, the property line. Come to a compromise, whatever makes the most sense. The, uh, How does the face, is that? I think the only way it could be if they decided, somebody decided to do that would be on the property line, and that would benefit the school along with the homeowners on that fence line. Mm -hmm. The uh, in my mind, I think that would be a shared cost. And I'm not, I can't speak for everybody. I'm not saying that. Well, I understand not, that. I it's understand. Not that. Objectable. Um, right. Again, the, the thing is, we don't have a fence today. We don't need one, mm -hmm. but we will in the future. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Thank you. Anyone else? You said behind behind the school is a generator and dumpsters. Dumpster generators, chillers, HVAC equipment. How, I mean, often, how often do they empty the dumpsters? I did not ask that question. I can get back to you. I'm going to assume. I think it's once a week. Because yeah, that's a pretty moment. noisy operation. Yeah, I have one right behind me. I yeah. can hear it in my house. I mean, the generator's also going to, I mean, this, the fence doesn't solve this, but the generator is going to go off weekly yeah. for the scheduled tests and maintenance and everything else. Mm -hmm. there, there will be activity back there. Um, if I could add one more thing, um, I know you guys are voting on an or, or a variance for the street widths today to make them more narrow than what the road currently says. I could be wrong on that. Maybe, maybe there could be some quick pro pro there. If you guys are making the streets smaller to help the developer out. You know, it's a talking point. The other thing is, I, and I just say this, you know, in passing, has anybody thought, I know you guys thought about fire trucks. Have you guys thought about buses? <clears throat> just an accident today on uh, Kent. Um, because there's some construction work going on and the bus couldn't get through. Um, is there going to be an ordinance to make sure that cars can't park on both sides of the road so buses can get through? Just some thoughts. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. All right. Moving on, Mr. Bridge, would you like to introduce? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Moving on with the uh, meeting, we have a few Board of Zoning Appeals hearings. So normally under normal circumstances, Board of Zoning Appeals is a separate board from council. It's a sole separate five-person entity. Uh, since we've been having some issues getting people to volunteer, we do have one application, which I'll uh, update council on that later this week. Um, right now, they, they passed a legislative piece to allow the council to act as a board of zoning appeals in the absence of the real Board of Zoning Appeals. So what we have tonight is two simple cases. So McDonald's has officially submitted to become part of our city. They're looking to build on the outlot by IGA. And with that comes a various uh, slew of variances they are requesting to have. Um, so we're gonna do two case reports tonight. One has to do with the set front setback, and that basically is how far off the back to side of the road they would like to be. And the second one is for signage. So Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and read uh, what I can read for the staff report. And this has will have to do with the front setback variance. We do have uh, Seth in the crowd today. He is representative from McDonald's, so he will have a chance to get up and speak as well. What I'm gonna do is just a quick overview of the staff report that's been uh, submitted to council. I wanna read a narrative statement that was submitted by uh, Seth, and then some general discussion, and then council and uh, the public can have their chance as well. So what we have in front of you guys tonight is a front setback variance. 
So uh, right now the general zone, the general business zoning setback is 100 feet and is measured from the edge of the principal structure to the property line. The applicant is seeking a front setback of 62 feet re resulting in a 38 foot variance. That is not in a nutshell. I'm going to read, let me get to it real quick. These things tend to have a lot of pages with them. And it reads as follows, and I'll email this to you. McDonald's is proposing to construct a new restaurant on a vacant commercial lot in front of IGA Shopping Center along North Dayton Lakeview Road in New Carlisle. The proposed McDonald's will have a footprint of 3,694 square feet with the long side of the building running north to south on the site and the short edge <coughs> side of the building running west to east on the site. The restaurant would have a double drive would have double drive-through lanes and 40 total parking spaces including two accessible spaces. A short Public private sidewalk extension is proposed with a crosswalk on the McDonald's parking lot to provide designated pedestrians access to the restaurant. Indoors, the restaurant dining area will, be, will have a seating for 38 and the largest number of employees per shift will be 17. Access to the proposed McDonald's would come from two driveways. The first proposed driveway is located in the southwest corner of the site and would be the right in, right out only driveway from North Dayton Lake Lakeview Road meaning that traffic can, coming on the <coughs> to, uh, 235 could not turn left into the site. They would have to turn left into the IJ Shopping Center and utilize the second driveway. The second proposed driveway is located on the northeast corner of the site and would be a full access driveway from a drive aisle located within the shopping center. The proposed layout of McDonald does require variance from this front, set, front yard setback requirement, General Business Zoning District. Section 1260.08 yards of the City New Carlisle Zoning Code specifies the solid building setbacks, and it's just a chart with what I already stated for about 100 feet, and they're going for a 38 foot setback. With the required building setback in the GB zone, which is general business, and the width of the existing lot, 181 feet, uh, McDonald's was left with a building envelope that is approximately 31 feet wide. Most of the commercial or standalone restaurant structures are wider than 31, and given the existing depth of the outlots in the front of the IGA store, building setback variance becomes inevitable. Despite the narrowing of, uh, the, excuse me, despite the narrow building envelope on the subject property, the proposed McDonald's does comply with other required setbacks on the rear and yard sides. For this, uh, and considering this request, and as you look at the existing business located along State Route 235 through the city, there does appear to be existing businesses that would not comply with the 100 foot yard setback mm -hmm. and 50 year yard setback requirement of the GB zone. However, many of the properties with existing businesses are zoned central business and the building setbacks in the CB are much less. Mm -hmm. There is, sim there is a similar sized outlot to the north of the entrance IJ Shopping Center that is overflow parking for the New, Car Car New Carlisle Chrysler Dodge Ram, D Jeep, uh, excuse me, Jeep Dodge Ram dealership. So the proposed McDonald's is unique in the fact that it would only be the standalone commercial structure built on one of the outlots. For this request, the existing dimension of the property, which are in part necessitate the front yard setback variance for the proposed McDonald's are not result actions of, of the applicant uh, McDonald's. This outlot was platted by the owner of the shopping center long before McDonald's became interested in the property. In addition, the other lots in a GB zone are larger, so permitting a so permitting a <coughs> large, uh, a front setback variance for the proposed McDonald's does not convey special privileges to McDonald's that was denied to other developments in the general business zone because the other lots had sufficient depth to meet the required building setbacks. Just the opposite, the graining of this variance would request would allow McDonald's to develop the subject property just as other lots of the general district, district zoning have been allowed to develop. Basically, in a nutshell, what the applicant is saying is due to the fact of the size of the lot and how it was laid out prior to McDonald's submitting and the existing businesses that they're seeking the variance would not put undue hardship to anyone else. That's all I have for the record. Seth, would you like to say anything on behalf of the applicant? And this is Seth McDormand. He's from, uh, represented from McDonald's. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Mr. Mayor, Community Council members. Uh, my name is Seth Dorman. I work for Performance Solutions. Uh, my address uh, is 100 North Avenue, Suite 103 to 164, Common Hill, Ohio, 44278. Um, and we are uh, an agent working for McDonald's in, in this uh, application. Um, as Mr. Bridge said, Doug McDonald's is proposing the new restaurant at 500 North Main Street in Carlisle. And they're very excited to be joining uh, the community here. Um, with that, I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I think uh, Mr. Bridge did a great job summarizing our request. 
<coughs> Council, any questions? So all you're asking is it be allowed to be 62 feet from the street? That's correct. Uh, the rest of the building will meet the side uh, and neighbor setbacks. Uh, is that going to cause any interference with people pulling out of the house, the IGA parking lot, looking both ways no. on 235? Yes. Yeah, I don't believe that. Uh, the building will be within any, within any of the site distance triangles. Okay. Thank you. Do you have something, sir? No. Uh, I'd make a motion to approve the request. I had a question before. Approve. I had a question before. Okay, go ahead. I just didn't know if you had a question. <laughs> no, I, I just had one. Looking at the at the layout, uh, and, and whether whoever wants to chime in. So I look. I see the the uh, the one way entrance and the one way out over to the to the uh, south side of the building, going out to two thirty five. Is that where will that place that at as far as two thirty five? Well, it's going to be like that. That exit will be here, and then Gale Woods about here, right? It'll be offset just a little. Well, quite a bit around the site plan. That's what I thought. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. All my question is, is Brandy, because I know that there's the potential for sure. you know, down the road to be a traffic light at Galewood, just because that's that's always been a tricky intersection with the V there and whatnot. Um, it, it, would it be possible, and this may be a bad idea, you, I mean, both of you can tell me, is to, I mean, do you, need, do you have to have an entrance and exit point on to 235, or can you just have it spill out to the parking lot to the side or the back and use the one entrance the IGA already uses? We're just here for the variances. The planning board is actually going to vote on the site plan on the 14th. Okay. So gotcha. since you guys are board of zoning appeals, okay. you're just dealing with the uh, 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 variance side of things. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, then I'll but we that. went through that in-house. Um, we had them change it to what it is now. Okay. Um, and they are very aware of the potential redo of Galwood. Yeah. So that is brought to their attention. Okay. But we, we, since we're so far off with knowing how Galwood is possibly even going to be redone at this point, because okay. we know we have many options for right. that. Um, really not put too much emphasis on changing anything because it's perfectly located where it's at. In our gotcha. Area. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. if I could just add oh, please. Uh, so the access point is very important to the phones. We mm -hmm. initially were proposing a full access and, and working with the um, with Randy and with Brian. Um, they uh, suggested that it would be better uh, you go to a right in, right out. Yeah. And I would agree. I mean, if you're going to go onto it, I do like that, if that's yeah. what it has to be done. So. And we had discussed leaving the entrance off of 235 and just solely using the entrance to IGA. And um, it did come back that um, it was safe enough to use that cutout and arguably understand <coughs> McDonald's is going to want that Main Street cut through. Right. Cut I mean, I understand. Cut. I was just curious. So. Sure. All right. Well, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Bond. Is there a reason you can't move that lot back closer to the to get that setback to adjust that lot which way are you talking about moving toward easy? to get the, the 100 foot setback that you technically need well you'd have to move it back and then go into your rear then they would need a variance for the rear setback oh you'd lose the yeah it's that, so it under that yeah this is a very weird shape out lot if it was vertical opposed to like this then it wouldn't be a, so much of an issue I'm just wondering down the road you ever want to widen 235 now we're kind of there's still a little bit of easement along the side of the road here if you want to put like a bike lane or anything mm -hmm. like there's that still a little bit of that kind of screwed mm -hmm. this layout mirrors a lot of the park lane minus the ins and outs but if you look at how the park lane is set up park lanes this way or as far as this this way I'm pretty sure that's the new model of McDonald's are built. Good, Mr. Bond. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else, sir? I move to accept the variance. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second by Mr. Roadwall to accept. To approve the variance. Yes. Approve the thirty. Of those, uh, Correct. Front. Okay. To approve. Correct. It's not accept that. Okay. And when you're ready, Miss Burner. Mayor Lowry. Yes. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rogold. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, Seth, don't get too comfortable, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. 
All right, let me get my notes for the other one. So I'm not going to read the narrative word for word, just like five pages, and nearly lose people after a paragraph or two. So I'm sorry to go through what we just went through. All right, so moving on, Mr. Mayor, with your permission? Yes, sir. Great, thank you. So the next the BZA uh, uh, hearing we have is for signage variance. So we have the variance, we have the setback. So our sign code is pretty extensive. Anyone who works in planning and zoning, your sign code is like some of the worst sign code you have to interpret. It's very tough sometimes. So. Uh, basically, when we went through this application, we found quite a few uh, variances they needed for signs. Signs uh, variances are kind of common when you come to these kind of developments. There's incidental signs, there's directional signs, there's all kinds of different signs. So if you look on the second page, that uh, council, we have the variances needed. I'm just going to run these off for the record and for the crowd. So we need a variance off section 1290.11b1, permanent wall signs. One permanent wall sign is permitted for each established business use subject to divisions under B for this section. Basically what that code says is each elevation direction can have an X amount of number of signs. So in this particular uh, variance, we require a number of wall signs. They have one, but on the east wall they have two. One that is the McDonald Golden Arch, and that is the actual letters that spell out McDonald's are in two separate locations. So therefore they have more than the allowable number of signs on that particular elevation. They're also going for a variance off 1290.11A6. Permanent ground signs may not exceed 15 feet in height. They are requesting 30 feet in height. And in the narrative statement, it is due to the fact of where that sign is located, competing with the sign for Howard's IGA, and also to where the building setback location is located. Um, so our code does permit 15. They are seeking 30. Um, 12, they're also seeking a variance from 1290A2. The maximum size for any one sign is 50 square feet per face. The ground size, um, mm -hmm, mm. the ground size is uh, measured at 93.75 square feet. 1290.117A, uh, signs must be 10 feet away from the property line. Um, right now, um, it is noted as three foot setback on the plans. There was a, 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 an error on the staff report that says five feet. They're actually requesting a seven foot variance. So if we know that the minimum setback is 10 feet, they, are, uh, they have suggested three on their site plan. So that tells us that they need a seven foot variance. Um, they are also going on uh, 1290.04E6, shall be set back a minimum five feet from all property lines. Again, too, that has to do with ground signs and their directional signs. Some of those setbacks are um, five, uh, seven feet and some are um, like directional signs. You have a five foot and they need a, a half foot setback. So all these signs have to deal with either the height, size, location of the sign um, or where they are located. So basically that sums that up in a nutshell. They do have a narrative statement in here. Hopefully council took time to read that. It is, like I said, pretty lengthy. Um, Seth, can you go back up front? Council, do you have any questions for any of these particular signs? Do you know what the height of the IGA sign is? I do not know, but it's probably around 20, 25 feet, if I guess. And that is a pure guess. Oh, it's much taller. Yeah, it is. Taller. Yeah, it's, it's probably. It's probably closer to 50. It's probably closer to 50. 50. Did you have anything else, Ms. Eggleston? Mr. Bond? Uh, my only thing would be yeah to make sure that IGA is afforded the same I guess benefit in signage or whatever that, that they would be afforded they're an existing business been there for a long time we don't want to cut them out as far as um, you know their ability to draw customers I mean you don't even have to put a McDonald's sign up and people will find you. <laughs> Let's just it be just, real. Just, yeah, I mean. No signs needed. But uh, kids are hardwired that way now. So, you know. <laughs> but that's that's my only concern is to make sure it doesn't impact the, the current business. Right. And, and we, we talked about that. So when you look at the McDonald's sign, not only is it located X amount of feet off of their property line, but there's like a 25-foot uh, thing of grass from the shopping center driveway to where their property line starts. So we did think about that too because we didn't want it to compete or non-compete with that sign. Um, that sign at the shopping center is massively wide. Um, I don't know if you had time to look at the diagram, the visual on this sign is very narrow and you can almost kind of see through it. So visually, I think the shopping center sign is going to win because it's so... It's big. broad. It's broad. Yeah. Very good point though, Mr. Vaughn. Anything else, sir? Mr. Vice Mayor. And you want your sign to be how high, how tall? Where did I see a hundred feet? 
that was probably the setback requirement for the setback. So it's a big sign. You ever done a hundred foot sign? See it from a park lane. McDonald's. No, you just drive it. <laughs> Maybe interstate sign. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to entertain any any questions you may have. Do I? Are you welcome still? Okay. Yeah, my only concern was kind of to copy uh, Mr. Bonds. Is yeah, I didn't want it to be similar in size and basically copying over IGA and blocking their view or any kind of safety concerns is pulling out of IGA and causing a you know a blind spot for people. Uh, but it doesn't. You know, from looking through these over the weekend and yeah there you go there's a picture of it if you guys haven't took a peek at it so this sign like you said i don't know how tall the iga sign is but this one is nowhere near as tall i don't think i think i think dan's pretty close it's probably 50 60 feet tall but um yeah i don't i don't have an issue with this mr Rubble, anything no sir i make a motion to accept Do you you can I just second. Yeah. I second it. Well, did you have any no. questions for? Okay. No, he made the motion. I second it. Would you? This is public comment. Huh? That's how it. Do you have a problem taking any questions? No. Okay. I'll, go ahead, sir. Thank you. And I'll just for the comment, I'll need a name and address for the record, sure. please. Uh, David Peters, sixteen eighty-five Addison and Carlisle Road. Um, I. Thought there would be a podium, so yes, stand here. There was. It's back there, but we just gotcha. that way we get everybody on camera. Okay, I've lived in this town for about two years. None of you know me, basically. Uh, sometimes I feel like an outsider, um, but when it comes to this development, I think I can offer valuable insight. Um, I went to Miami University, graduated with an urban planning degree and GIS certificate. Um, right now, I work for a very large township in the Cincinnati metropolitan area. We work on large projects such as McDonald's. We work on these all the time. We have several a month. Um, a lot of things are different about the place I work and the place I live, but a lot of the things are the same too. We both have passionate residents, uh, long history. Uh, the town I work for was established in the 1700s. We're pretty close to that. And uh, both are growing. Um, when I moved here, I said New Carlisle will grow more in the next 10 years than it has since World War II. And I still believe that. With the new housing developments, new retailers, road work and community infrastructure, I think we're tracking toward that. And I think this development for the McDonald's is good. Um, that brings me to a point. Uh, my front door will be closer to McDonald's than IGA's front door will be to McDonald's. So um, not only do I work in planning, but I live in a red house Shonda used to live in on the hill. Um, so I'm going to live very close to it too. I already see many signs in my window. Um, and. Even with the close proximity of my house, I'll say this up front, I think McDonald's is a good thing. I support where the McDonald's is gonna be going. I could have a not in my backyard view of this, but I think we need to recognize that a long base vacant piece of land is a good place to develop and grow. And I'd much rather have a new business on that parcel than watch one of the most historic buildings in town that's been standing since Ulysses S. Grant was in office get knocked down for a Taco Bell. But we'll talk about that another day. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about the sign. Um, I want to read the intent of the signage regulation and the zoning ordinance that we have in this town. It says, uh, if the intent of the chapter is to establish a reasonable regulation governing the size, character, and location of signs in the city of New Carlisle in the interest of safety and general welfare of the citizens, business concerns, and others affected sectors of the community. It's intended to protect property values, create a more attractive economic and business climate, enhance and protect the physical appearance of the community and preserve the scenic and natural beauty of the designated areas. It's further intended to reduce sign distractions and sign obstructions that may contribute to traffic accidents, reduce hazards that may be caused by signs containing <coughs> or projecting of the public right of way and provide more open space and cur curtail deterioration of natural environment and enhance community development. I ask if this sign is gonna be doing that. Um, in the scope of the variance request, the applicant cites many pre-existing non-conforming structures that have a zero foot setback downtown. Uh, the applicant's clearly comparing their request for the setback, which we already approved, which I think was a good thing, um, for their setback for the new development with buildings that were grandfathered in before there was any zoning regulation in this town. Regarding the setbacks, the buildings are being used as precedent for the applicant to argue that he shall receive a sh uh, setback variance, which he did. This is why we can't allow a 30-foot sign. 
the zoning ordinance, the rule, the law of this community states that a sign can't be higher than 15 feet. Yes, yet McDonald's wants to double this. Why? Why do they need a sign at a height that is normally reserved to be seen from a nearby interstate? They claim that it's for better visibility for people coming around the corner in their narrative statement, which I did read too. On the site plan, however, they mention removing trees that currently sit on the corner of the lot. With these trees gone, McDonald's will have full visibility as far back as the DMV. I looked on Google Street Maps. If the trees weren't there, you could see McDonald's. Take my breath. McDonald's has one of the most recognizable logos and building styles on the planet. Recall the 2004 documentary Super Size Me where children could identify the golden arches in Ronald McDonald more often than they can identify a picture of Jesus Christ. My point, people will know that McDonald's is there. I heard you guys saying that earlier. McDonald's wants a 30-foot sign, an exception for them, double the max height that everyone else has to follow. Papa John's, Domino's, Arrow Queen, the Golden Arches want their massive sign to tower over all those places and all the places to come. But wait, all those places to come, they will not tower over any future signs of Taco Bell, Wendy's, a liquor store, a grocery store. Any future places will argue that the precedent set by McDonald's today, set by you guys today, is the same way that McDonald's is arguing the setback for their variance. But the difference is the precedent McDonald's is asking for today predates zoning. The one that the precedent future businesses will argue for does not. It will be right here, right now. And the compromise and the impact is important on our zoning resolution. We need to make McDonald's follow the rules and keep their 30-foot interstate sign out of this town. Is this the type of community that will give Ronald McDonald special treatment? I don't think so, but maybe I'm just an outsider. My recommendation, denial of the requested sign variance, monument sign. This will be seen coming around the corner. This will work for everybody. This is modern. Is our town not good enough for something this good? Very, very well written. Um, so the issue with what Mr. Uh, what he said is the president was actually set by Speedway. Speedway actually, when they built this sign down, with its location down here, got a variance off their ground side to exceed the minimum as well. So that president was started with them. The ground sign was an option too. We looked at one of the first ones, but it's not going to work. So if you look at the site plan where it's at, where the location is, their sign, their ground sign would literally be back by where the McDonald, where the ground, where the sign is for I, Howard's IGA. So when you look at that, I don't know where else they're going to put a monument sign here because there's gas easement. So we looked at all that. There's a what? There, there's gas easement. Oh, okay. They can't use any of this stuff right here. So when you look at the monument sign, which ideally would be the better sit, it's not going to work because the monument sign would be out here. So 30 foot, when I was talking to Seth about it, uh, McDonald's was comfortable doing the 15. I said, do what you think is best because we didn't feel as though this was detriment. We said we'd let it up to the governing board, which is why we're here. But everything that he just mentioned, we've already went through an in-house um, an analogy of the site plan. Um, so very, very, very great presentation, but those are some of the things we already looked at. Can I say one more thing? It wasn't a great presentation. I was kind of shaky. But <laughs> <laughs> you had very well. But you were prepared. Uh, the variance is forever, by the way. Mm -hmm. So this, we're not just talking about McDonald's. If they close up in 10 years and say it didn't work out here, then uh, think of the worst business. Uh, I think an overrun of vape shops is pretty bad. They'd have their foot thirty foot sign sitting in there too, and there's nothing you can do about it. My one of my initial kind of not necessarily counter because I'm not arguing what you're saying. I 100 percent because I that was a nice sign that you'd shown is nice. the, the IGA sign. I don't I know we we were discussing. It. I don't know how tall it is, but I, I I would bet my life that it's probably another 20 feet taller than this McDonald's sign. So there's already that precedent. So you know if anything, it's it's going to be smaller and 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 much narrower this is you know this, this is 90 inches versus i mean that sign i bet you is six to eight feet wide or at least the framework of it at iga so um but i mean that's just my initial thought sir correct me if i'm wrong but wasn't the iga property annexed after it was built yeah. So then the, there's the, uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. the ordinance wouldn't apply. Okay. Yeah, that's right. How tall is the speedway sign? I want to say it's 20 plus feet. Don't quote me. I don't have it in front of me. But it was over 15. I remember the variance for it, going for it. I would agree to no taller than speedway. And didn't we already give a variance for safe and sound for their sign? 
and, and height? That I don't recall. There's signs. We may give a variance for. Oh, uh, flat ball. That's what. It was. Okay. Yeah, that's that wasn't a height thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Any other? I'm done. Okay. Zach, would you like to say something? I would just ask if, if um, the council's pleasure was to not approve the sign height variance. Um, there are other variances involved that we would still need um, mm -hmm. related to the wall signage and the setbacks. Yeah. If, if, if you're willing to entertain those, I've asked that you would move on those um, kind of outside of the, mm -hmm. the, the sign height. Correct. So I hate, hate to ask you this question. I don't want to load it, but is McDonald's still okay with moving forward with the sign if the grant variance is not submitted as we discussed? If if the variance is not approved, um, they uh, they would go with a sign height that that would meet the uh, the, the city's code. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thank you. He just answered your question. I was going to ask. Okay. Then that's that's what I was going to ask him. Now is that going to take some of the incidental <coughs> underneath of the way? If it's not thirty feet, is it be cafe sign still going to be available on it? Is it going to take away from the advertising side of things, which is fine in our book. Yeah, I, mean, I think we would we would still have the the primary panel and the secondary panel underneath. Um, well, I'd give them a variance of twenty, just like Speedway. Good. You want to say anything? Would you be happy with the twenty foot instead of the fifteen, like we just gave Speedway? Um, would that? Yeah, I mean, if, if, if your pleasure is to allow us to go up to twenty, um, you know, certainly, certainly. Uh, the reason being, we do have a, a very wide 50 foot high pressure gas line easement, and that's kind of why we've got the setbacks, but also um, with, with where that sign has to be located, we think the additional height helps, helps with the visibility. Yes. Well, and I think a, a larger sign gives traffic a little bit of a heads up where they're not coming on it and then obviously hitting their brakes, let's say they just realize there's a McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there I think, will be customers coming through that aren't familiar with the Yeah, oh, especially in the summertime. I mean, I think a traffic count and the posted speed limit that go in to help all that control that. So, <clears throat> so if McDonald's be good for a 20 foot sign, I think uh, I would be okay if if uh, my buddy here would like to amend his motion for from 30 to 20 foot. Now part of that variance request with the. the Mr. Bond, are we one hundred percent sure the speedway is twenty feet? I don't know. It's on my head. It could be. It's, it could. I, it was like 17, 20, 17, 2018. I'm just saying before we pass something and say it's twenty feet, maybe we should just double check. Maybe it's not that much. I guarantee it's higher than fifteen. I think. Uh, yeah, it's definitely. And the square 15. footage is also something to think about because. Um, <coughs> I guess personally, I'd like to see <clears throat> us hold on the on the height and the square footage on that particular sign. The others on the sides of your building and stuff. That's that's fine, in my opinion. Um, but I think for the just the look of the neighborhood, the look of the uh, the whole area there, I think it would be uh, just a little more aesthetic to have it lower and the appropriate square footage of what the the zone. Code has right now. So. Okay. CV, I mean, I'm pretty sure right it also got a variance off the size too. Not only the height, because the height's going to impact the size of the sign. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that was, like I said, I can't remember what year that was. That could have been even 2016. When that new speedway come in? 2017, 2017. 2016, Six years ago. Just to add to the, the area, the sign area discussion, that, that, that's divided amongst two panels. It's not this one. It's a lot of solid space. A lot of open air. It is too. And, and another difference is this you have a lot of see through area. Yeah. So it's not going to be so intimidating. 
If I don't, if I don't overset my boundaries, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a recommendation: is maybe look at capping it at the 15 feet, so it's in, within our code. Five feet ain't gonna make much of a difference. McDonald's is McDonald's; they're gonna know it's there. Yeah. Um, cap it at five feet. Five feet. Allow it. I would make the motion to allow the ground sign to be a similar uh, structure and allow it to go over the uh, potential area of the sign because I don't know what that calculation is going to be. If it's 30 feet now. Can we just do simple math and divide it in half? No, well, we can't do that because then you're, you're anticipating supports being the same and not. So we're not good, unless we do a quick calculation on that sign, if it goes to 15, we don't know that right at the top of our head. So we don't know if that's going to exceed the 50 square foot or not. So if council would be okay with it, cap it at the 15 to accommodate, you know, some council requests, but just give a variance of, on total you know, square feet for the sign. total sign, as long as it sticks to this. Not saying McDonald's would do this, but let's just say we don't put it in or a similar design or structure. We don't want them to come back with something wide, you know, like this or like that. So at least box them into this and say no more than 15 feet. Similar structure. And whatever that calculates out to be, that's what it calculates out to be. Because we know it's going to be, I'm assuming, Seth, when you reduce this, your McDonald's arc is going to be smaller. Is it still going to be that size? I think it gets smaller. It gets smaller. Yeah. Uh, could, 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 and Mr. Mayor, if I may. Uh, if yeah, go, no, go ahead. I'll get to Ben after you. Uh, so the the sign could be 75 square feet since we're reducing the height, or could reduce the, the height, correct? So how... Mm -hmm. I think until we know the square footage of the sign, uh, maybe we should just postpone that particular vote until we know more about the square footage and then bring it back again at the next meeting, if, if we could do that. Is that a possibility, Mr. Bridge? You want my honest opinion? Well, um, I wouldn't ask if I didn't, sir. Um, Legally, we're, uh, it might take some time to advertise. We have to wait for them to get back with the new stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they have to advertise. Um, to me, if you reduce the ground sign to 15 height, the size is automatically going to shift. So to me, you're just re you're making a redundant meeting, to be honest with you. Okay. Because uh, like I said, once you shrink it down, everything else is going to follow suit. We right. Now, that to, to your defense, what we don't know, what that total square yeah. is, what it's going to be. But we know it's going to be significantly smaller. But it isn't going to be over. I, I don't think it'd be over 75 or 80 square feet. It might even be, probably be than less that. than that. Mm -hmm. With with a 15 foot sign, it may fall within within the 50 square foot limit. So just given, you know. So yeah, just my question is: is what's lesser of the two evils? And I hate to say it like that, but is it the height, or is it the size? Because like I said, what's unique about this one? If you look at the IGA sign, it is massive it's got mm -hmm. the two posts and then it has the big square you can't see through it have all the lettering right this one even though it may seem big it's not going to seem because you can see through it you know <clears throat> so for the sake of not having redundant meetings that's what i would recommend you guys are more than welcome to move forward with how you see fit. <coughs> the planning like i said the planning board votes on the overall site plan on the 14th okay um, so i mean ideally we would like to have some sort of decision prior to that um but we'll make it, we'll, make, we'll do whatever council wants us to do. <coughs> Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Mr. Bond. I think it would be more helpful to have something more concrete than just it might be this, it might be that type of thing before making an actual decision on it for me. So, well, what you're, what, what you would be doing is, is you're just going to change the dimensions and then they're going to play around with, you know, whether it's 15 or 20, then they're going to just come back with a, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're going to come back with a new reconfiguration that we're going to have to approve again, right? So, or so no? the, the code allows a 15 foot tall sign mm -hmm. with a max area of 50 square feet. Mm -hmm. And right now you're at 30 with 93. Simple math says yeah. it's 15, it's going to be 46. Say that again. I mean, so right now you're, you're at 93.75 square feet, correct? At 30. So, I mean, just simple math, you just, if you go to 15, that 93.75 goes to 46. So you're actually well within code if you stay at 15. So what you're looking for is just variance for the signs on the building. We don't give you the variance for the 30-foot sign. You have to stay within our regulations of 15. 
and <clears throat> and medial. If it would be the, the variance for the two wall signs on the east side mm -hmm. and for the setback for the ground sign and the directional sign or the direction. directional so sign. Pass the, 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 the building sign. Give it 15 to come back. And then we'll determine if we go back or not. Just go ahead, if you don't mind, just go ahead and grant the 15, and that way he can work his stuff. If he needs to come back for another right. variance, he comes back. If it's under 50, it's under 50. Right. That way we're not at least getting something on the book. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it makes sense just to uh, withdraw that, that height right. area out, out of the request. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I withdraw my second on this on the motion for this uh, sign. Right. So I think they're going to stick within the code. There's nothing more we need to do with it. Mm, well, we'll still need a motion. We still need to prove the. Well, way. I'm just talking about on the sign, and and if I'm if I'm reading this correct, do we not have to make a motion to approve each one of these, or can we do them as a lump sum? Um, I would say you can do the ones as a lump sum that you're going to approve. Okay. The ones that you're going to approve, and then the other ones. They just, they're just, they're not approved. I don't say they're denied either. So okay. this is new grit territory for us. We've never had this happen. Yeah, so I don't know if we just die for lack of motion type thing. No, we've got a motion. It needs to be withdrawn. Well, if you withdraw your second, I, did. I don't need to withdraw my motion. It'll just die because okay. lack of motion. Uh, with that said, I'll make a motion to accept the rest of the variances. And that leaves the height of the ground sign at 30 foot out. And the other ones, I'll make a motion to approve them. Second. So motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwall. Okay. And a question by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. From what I understand, this building is going to face south. Right. No, it's going to face north. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So on the east side, you want two signs. That's right. One will say McDonald's, obviously. What will the other one say? It's an arch. Okay. They can't be put together in one side? Um, they, they separate them, they space them out. Um, one's kind of front, front corner of that, that side, and then the other is close to the on that side. So they do have to space them out. And direction signs, that's the enter here? That's correct, yeah. yeah. And you want it to be half a foot from the street? Half a foot, and that's because we have to stay out of that easement here, uh, for the high pressure gas line. But it doesn't matter how far it away is from the one off the parking lot? Uh, the one off the parking lot, we need the five foot. Ground sign, that's the tall one we're talking about? That's the tall one, yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I'm done. Anyone else? All right, when you're ready, Ms. Berner. <coughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Okay, the motion is for everything but the street sign. Right, the tall one. Everything but number three, yes, sir. Yes. Councilman Bond. Uh, and, a, and the square footage, correct? Yeah. yeah. It both go together, yes. So they go together. <coughs> yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. That passes 6 to 0. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Seth. I'll be shooting you an email. I'll give you a call tomorrow. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice evening. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. All right. Last one. So, the last one we have is this is not a BZA thing. So, this is a continuation of the planning board meeting. So, what we have now is the last round of uh, plans for the Arbor Homes development. So how this process has unfolded has been a very timely process. It actually is a two-part process. Preliminary plans, preliminary plans. Um, that goes on the final. So we are at the last of preliminaries. Um, so right now, what we are counsel here to do is look at what the planning board approved, which is the uh, certain utilities to the under the right-of-way, under the grass, and the second detention pond that is going to be dry most of the time. So if it's depicted as being wet, that is um, not how it's going to be most of the time. Um, and then the road width variant. So as we have brought up earlier, we we're asking for 26 feet. Council just not too long ago approved a 24-foot pavement for pavement for DR Horton. 
So these roads on this by this uh, this development are actually going to be wider than the other ones they had pre presented. So basically, that's what we're here for today. Um, it is not a variance per se because when you look at our code sections, the dealing with subdivisions that are uh, more than five lots, this process is just part of it, and it goes actually to the council for the council to view on it. So that's what we have. Should council want to do anything different that the planning board has already approved, it is not a simple majority vote on council. You actually need five affirmative votes. So again, if you guys did want to entertain that fencing requirement, it would take five since the planning board did not hear it. Um, if they would have came to the planning board meeting, um, they, the, count, the planning board could have made that recommendation to you, then it had been flipped if it took five votes to take it away. So basically, that's what we have in a nutshell. We do have Paul Metzger in the audience today. Paul, did you have anything you want to present or just you want to come up the front for any questions? any questions? Yeah, answer some questions. So again, this is the last phase of this. The next phase is the final side of things. They have up to a year to submit any construction drawings to move forward. Um, what our next step is, is working out the TIF stuff. So that's going to also come back into that Addison New Carlisle split. What we're doing now in house, and we're going to be talking to choice about engineering. What phase in this development is the best to entertain that Addison New Carlisle reconfiguration? whether it be the cut through, the roundabout, whatever kind of option they had given us down the road. Um, so we, what we don't know, million dollar question is, and we don't want this to happen, is we don't know if that's going to be warranted on phase three, phase four. Another thing we have going is timing. You know, phase three, phase four, if these houses don't take off because of the interest rate, that could be years down the road. So we're kind of just holding off on that because we don't know how these are going to fly off. But what they have done separate um, from the last time you guys have seen it. Paul, can I actually use your visual real quick? I appreciate you. <laughs> so council has seen all this. Man, help him out. The only big difference we have this time is they have entered a second detention pond right here. There's not enough um, to get uh, elevation to get from here down to this one. So they wanted to put another one in. The planning board at first had an issue with this, but they actually, through discussion, realized it was not big of a deal because it's never really going to hold water. It will be indented, so the planning board allowed that to be there with proper signage. Another cool thing with this development, if you all remember, this cut through for Addison New Carlisle Road was actually a little bit further south, but we had to move it up, and we did that. We didn't want it, if this cut through comes through, we wanted to be able to back the traffic up a little more, should it get to that, opposed to being down here, this traffic would have staggered a lot easier. So again, the only changes that have been made since the last time you guys saw it was the tension pond, location of the new entrance right up here, and then the uh, sewer, Sewer, water, and sanitary going from under the road into the right of way under the grass. The one thing I want to say, really it's not detention ponds or really infiltration ponds. Detention pond. Very rarely will hold water. Our engineer calculated that in a 100 year rain event, the happen very often, about four feet of water will be in that. Once it stops raining, it will be gone in about two hours. So because of the sand soils here. So. Um, I think I'll talk first of the road width request we're making. Again, we did, did a good job of uh, comparing it with some other streets in the area. Again, we're actually going to be wider than what we've already approved with BR Horton. To the uh, Mr. Mills' comments about the uh, bus, buses, fire trucks, those are all part of what will be reviewed on our final plan approval with turn radiuses and uh, the, 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 I don't know if I know the right terminology, Randy, but, uh, there's a calculation that's done to show that fire trucks and essentially buses will be able to be, be able to get around. Um, this is intended to be parking on one side only, and there'll be signs posted on the other side. So, um, and then in, in new, new modern subdivisions, this is really the standard. A lot of the older communities and, and a lot of these older houses have single car uh, garages with single car wide driveways. We'll have double, at least double uh, garages, sometimes three car garages with widths for people to park off street as well. So, um, other than that, really, uh, a couple comments I want to make about the fencing request. Um, I first learned about it today. We've, I've had personally two <coughs> conversations uh, with uh, Paula Crew. Paula Crew. Crew, the um, uh, school superintendent. superintendent. And that was not brought up. We had a conference call, which I know some board members were on. I don't know who all was on it um, one afternoon, two, three months ago, and none of that was brought up. We don't believe a fence is merited here. Our homeowners will all have the right to put a fence up themselves. We limit our fence height to four foot high uh, through our, sub or through our uh, um, HOA documents. 
Um, also, if someone does have a pool, whether the city requires or not, within the HOA documents, they'll have to have a fence. Uh, I would agree that if anybody has uh, animals, they tend to put fences up. So we would really rather that be up to our, uh, our future buyers. I mean, if the school board would choose themselves to put up a fence, then they could do that on the property line. Is our position. Um, Mr. Mills, I believe, was speaking as a board member, but not for the board uh, as well. And again, because of the conversations we've had up to date with Paula, I, I don't know that that's a uniform uh, decision of the, of the board. Any other questions I can ask? Mr. Mayor? Uh, we'll go to Mr. Vice Mayor. Oh, sorry. Then yeah, we'll get right to you. Go There's ahead. currently trees surrounding the school property. There are, are some, are those so there are some trees. Um, Probably not. Because if there's going to be all that noise, the dumpsters, the generator, trees make a great buffer. They, they could make some, but again, I, you know, I've, I've worked around facilities like that. You're talking about a generator that runs once a week for an hour or two during daylight hours. It's not that big a deal. Uh, dumpsters and all that. And like this, this, I think you were the one who said you lived near one. Those noises are made, but again, it's, it's not overly a detriment to us. Um, I don't think a fence would, a fence certainly wouldn't help it. No I mean, it, if, if we can keep trees, we will, would like to, but again, it gets into grading and everything else that has to be done. Uh, we haven't developed those plans that far along yet back there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Robo. Um, look at your building site. That back part that Mr. Mills, what, what phase is that? Do you, have you... Well, I would imagine that would be probably one of the last phases, given that your your main entrance and exit will be off Addison Car. Right line. now, this isn't set, but yes, sir. we're generally talking about that area there being our sixth phase, which would be our last. Okay. Um, we're, we're kind of going through a little review right now. In a few weeks, we're going to be submitting 30-some lots right here to be phase mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. the final plan development. Um, phase two is going to get into get part of this park operational. Yes, sir. And then most likely we're going to probably try to make the connection to Leatherwood. Um, we want that as much as anything for the fire line or yes, sir. the, the yeah. water line. Yep. We just think it'd be good to have that connection. Mm -hmm. um, so that's generally where we're thinking. But what we're going to be submitting, like I said, next week is really just that. But again, better chances that's and phase six at the end. And what's your realistic build out on this project? Six, eight, six years max? I, I mean, I'm in London, Ohio right now doing 60 a year. Okay. So we'd so. love to have that here. <laughs> okay. I mean, our, our our minimum projections are 36 a year. If we don't think we can do 36 a year, we question why we're in a Yes. Yeah. So, but so, we, frankly, like so on the low side, I mean, you're looking eight year build out on the high okay. side, six. Five or six, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogoff. Um, yeah, on the on the fence thing, and I know I've talked to Mr. Mills a little bit about it. You know, when when the elementary, the current elementary school was, you know, the middle school when I went there. You know, we had the two walkways that came from Drake, um, and I and I love. Well, I mean, even though I didn't live on that side, but that, I mean, those walkways were were great because I mean, you know, it, it just provided easy access for families and kids that didn't have to walk all the way around. So I mean, I think that's a great thing having the walkway. How far will that will they go? Um, What's, what's the plan? The last this? conversation we had with the school board, they asked us to move one from this side to this side since so these two, and that we just work with them as we go <coughs> farther along. We're going to take those to, you know, wherever their payment level, wherever their So it, it'll level. it'll bleed into somewhere. Yeah, but it's just something we It's not just going to stop out. We're going to have to work out with them. Right. Okay. I okay. mean, if they come in and say, we don't want them, and you're okay with it, we'll close them up and make a couple lots wider. Nah. But we think it's good. I mean, Kids don't have to ride buses. They can walk to school. Yeah, I mean, I think that's ride a good bikes. thing. Ride their bikes to school or whatever. And then for the fence, one of my concerns was, is like you were saying and, and some of the others was, you know, I think most of these people are going to put, or at least, I would say at least half of them are going to put their own fences up anyway. So if they put their fences up after, let's say, for a conversation, say, we asked you to put one up, then you've got two fences. Now you've got this awkward it's like, how do we get in there to, I mean, I, I, I mean, I know there'd be a gate and somewhere to get into it to mow it or, or weed eat, but then you've just got this odd space that's kind of being wasted. So um, I think the fencing. I asked what a rough average was, was fencing in our communities. It's about 40%. Okay. It'll probably be a little higher. I mean, I would probably put a fence up if I backed up to the school because I wouldn't want the school kids running over my yard. Right. More so than the other way around. Right. But 
again, we really think it's something that's best left up to the homeowner. And people have different styles. Mm -hmm. um, our, for our, our HOA documents are going to allow a generally open fence, four feet or, or less, uh, Kentucky board fence, split rail fence, um, you know, aluminum rod iron, no, no chain link. No chain link. Again, we want things to be generally open. <coughs> we don't want the, the stockade, barricade look. Um, it's just what we find our customers like. <coughs> okay, thank you. Anyone else? And, did you? No. you yeah. Okay, Mr. Bond, the only thing I was just going to say is I still am a big proponent of wide streets when it comes to the variance on the streets. I just, you have one shot at wide streets and it's when you put something in. I'm just yeah. a proponent of wide streets. So. That's right. Well, I'm just right. Good, Mr. Bond? Yeah, I am. Right. Again, with a recent um, approval from Horton, I think it's the precedent. <coughs> I said the same thing at that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's okay with you, you yep. good for some questions, sure. if any. Anybody have any questions? I've got some follow-up, if it's okay. Sure. Um, so following up, um, I, I can't speak to conversations we were at previously. I wasn't there. I can tell you and speak with Mrs. Crew um, and Mr. Dixon, our safety director. As of two weeks ago, they would like to see events. Um, in here. That's my conversations with them. I'm not going to get into he said, she said, but that's that was what was communicated to me by my initial. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, you're fine. I don't know if you're talking to me or not. That's no, fine. No. Uh, I just want just want to state that. Um, I guess a follow up question is, can you as the developer dictate that the property owners that buy those homes have to put in a fence? Can no. we? Yes. Do we want to? No. Why? I mean, again, it's it, it, it's it's taking away a, a, a customer's abilities to choose what they want to do in their lots. You made a comment that, oh, it's only six hundred dollars a lot. That's no big deal. They they'll, they'll never notice it. They notice it. We do things every day to control our costs. Mm -hmm. um, we're excited about coming. But we have to be very cautious of our costs because we, we aren't in Uber Heights. We're getting to come a little bit farther and those type of things. But um, we're just we're not supportive of that. I don't believe that really any type of ordinance would support that. Um, and, and it's gone through the planning board. I've been there four or five times now. It's never been brought up. I, I would like to pass on the fence. That's it. Thank you. And we're talking 15 houses. Thank you, sir. All right. Ma'am. Oh. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Which one? Ma'am. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were discussing yeah. earlier we'll about need, the McDonald's. Yeah, we'll need you to come up. Uh, name and Yeah, just for, it's for record purposes. Name and address for the record, please. Okay. Susan Roth, Letterwood. Is that okay? I'll find your address. Yeah, address, please. 897 Letterwood. Well, we were discussing earlier about the McDonald's, and I know he's gone now. And my concern <coughs> was McDonald's is right there by the ballpark. We're going to have a lot of traffic. We're going to have this new subdivision coming in. We got a school that needs a fence. And I'm just, I'm concerned. I'm like with him. I'm concerned about the, the kids, the safety of the kids. I mean, everybody's saying, well, most people contain their dogs. That's not true. I've been in this town, in my house, for 43 years. And I walked for many, many years. And I have quit walking the last three years because of the loose dogs in our area. So you got a subdivision coming up against our schools with our children, possibly no fencing. And if they do have fencing, they may cut it over it anyways. I understand that. Nothing against you. But we need, I do agree with him, the school board. We need a fence there to protect our kids. And what are we going to do with all this traffic? Which part? What do you well, the traffic for uh, McDonald's coming in and out. We got the ball ball field. We got all this traffic that's going to start from uh, these this building. And then I live on Leatherwood. Where are we going to? How are we going to direct all this traffic? You live around the corner from me. Yeah. What are we going to do with all this traffic? Well, we did traffic studies. What's it been? Five six months ago now. Longer than that. Longer than that. Well, and year. from year the now. studies that were worked out, I mean, that's you know one of the things I I lightly touched on earlier was. Um, when it when and if I mean and that intersection of Galewood almost warrants a 
a um, traffic light already. Even right. Without. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If we're going to have McDonald's and all that right there in that area, we got the ball field, and we see kids all the time riding their bikes back and forth. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that's something that really needs to be decided before we get all this started. What are we going to do with this to protect the kids going back and forth to ball practice and, and going to get ice cream or whatever, that whole area right there? As someone who, who who's involved with the ballpark, uh, the amount of kids actually ride their bike to the ballpark are very, very minimal. Minimal. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, and most of them who ride their bike usually come from the pool and they come in the back way. Uh, very, I mean, and, and I understand your concern. Um, well, yeah, but I'm literally, I, I'm like, literally at that ballpark from March through mid July every day. Um, I can tell you, uh, I, at most, I see five kids on bicycles. Um, and, and that could be uh, 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 a magnitude of things. A lot of parents like to what we call hover parents. Most of them don't drop their kids off anymore. Uh, most of the older kids don't play down there no more. So our the bulk of our players are 80% are of them are 12 and younger. So parents these days don't let their 12-year-olds, unlike when we were all kids, 12, we... I used to ride my bike in Park Lane when I was 12 to go to that McDonald's. Um, most of the parents now don't let their kids have that sort of freedom. So um, safety issue with the kids there, I'm, I'm not worried about. Um, I mean, I am concerned a little bit with the McDonald's with the parking because we do use that for overflow. Um, <clears throat> but uh, um, but again, I, I... And as for the traffic, I mean, we've had multiple multiple discussions on traffic and and what it brings to new carlisle and what it doesn't bring to new carlisle um and 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 the mayor and i've had this conversation i mean you know we're talking 600 homes i mean they're not bringing them all in next week i mean this is going to be over more likely an eight-year plan six at best um so um you know i you know we have I mean, Mr. Bridge has done a fantastic job of laying out plans for the next three to five years on how to to, to adjust when it comes to not only road construction, lighting, um, the fence thing, Mr. Mills, that, I mean, that, that was just, I mean, that's out of the blue. We've had multiple conversations about this development and not once has anyone from the city or from the, 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 the council board of education brought this up. Um, so, um, that's all I got. Anyone else? Thank you, Dan. Yeah, but back to things. There's been, you know, we've done traffic studies. I don't have them with me because it was done so long ago. But I mean, you know, there's obviously been an influx. But you know, you know, they're they're working on some some tweaks with one of the traffic setups right now at um, Jefferson and Maine. And then as the development grows, they'll look at the possible possibility of adding a light somewhere around Galewood, um, maybe even f and also further north um, if need be. So, I mean, it's something we've already looked at, it's something that the, the traffic uh, consultants have, have been playing with. So it's, it's, you know, it's on the radar. But like Dan said, it's not like they're going to plop down and have all these houses all at once. You know, we'll have time to adjust as things go. So, um, but, you know, like you'd mentioned earlier, and, and, and Matt, no disrespect, uh, you know, if, if Mrs. Crew was interested in this fence i would have thought she'd be here tonight i mean Paula, that's why i'm here i, I know she but asked me to come yeah. so i'd also like to share my email correspondence between the city okay. administration and myself to prove that there's been more interest. I'm, I'm not saying there hasn't but i mean if it's if it's something that she has felt that strongly about i would have figured she would have been here i'm not saying that you're not a credible spokesperson but i mean there's there's you know there's it's good to hear hear from you know more than one person from the group it just you know i just think that's how it is but you know not all the houses on drake like he'd mentioned earlier have have fences i mean you know when i went to the middle school there uh, where the current elementary school was there was never a problem i mean there was always and i agree there's it seems like there's always you know recently there's dogs on the loose and you know that's something that we you know the future council i think needs to focus on as well but um you know i think we will just you know the, do the best we can as far as what we got to work with so 
Mr. Well, you, you had brought up the email that came between us, so I just heard of this Vince within the past week or two as well. No, I'm, I'm so the previous emails interest. we have. I'm, 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 I'm talk about interest. Sure. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Okay. Sir. <clears throat> Can you speak up, sir, please? My name is Gene Rob. Okay. 897 Leatherwood. Thank you. My concern is about the narrow streets. <clears throat> I can give you examples. You can all see the examples. As you drive on Church Street, where it intersects with Funston, there are heavy equipment trailers there parked on the street. You go up in any of the plats, you find trailers parked on the street. You're not dealing with just passing cars. You're dealing with something that's wide enough to hold a car and then have fenders farther out on both sides. It's an obstacle course. And now you're talking about making the streets narrower. Yeah, you're saying you're going to park on one side. But it's an obstacle course. You need to do something to ensure that nothing's narrower or wider than a car when you do these studies <laughs> and make ordinances to that effect. You can't say, well, it's going to work, and then you allow something that's eight feet wider pulling up in there on the street. Mm -hmm. On a daily basis. Yeah. Well, just, I mean, just to give you a rundown real quick, so the, the widths of what they're going with is, is from uh, you know from pavement to pavement, not including the gutters. Um, well, no, we'll, we'll go we'll go uh, to the gutters. So they're they're going to go with 31 feet from gutter to gutter. So how wide that looks is Edgebrook is only 29, Glen is 29, Green Art is 29 and a half, Leatherwood is 29 and a half, White Pine is 30 and a half, and then Lake of course is 41 and a half. So. So they're, you know, they're actually, you know, up to a foot or a foot and a half wider than some of the other streets that we already have, which, I mean, even wider would be nice. I mean, if every street was almost as wide as Lake, it would be great, but, I mean. You're saying it's comparable in size to the plats I just mentioned. Right, but it's actually, a, it's a foot bigger. I mean, I know it's only. bigger doesn't compensate for the wide trailers. Well, who's trailer? Mr. Mayor. Sure. <laughs> so, pavement to gutter is confusing. Pavement to pavement with. You said Fenwick, Kennison area. Those are 23 feet wide. Okay. These are three feet wider. Okay. So yes, there are some issues. I've been up in the area you're talking about. It is kind of tight up there. But again, I just wanted to assure you that these are actually going to be three foot. If, talking about the same area, if I'm understanding okay. correctly. So different parts of town have different side widths. Okay. So our code just states 38 feet because that's lake. That's how wide lake is. So that's also dependent on what type of road lake is. And that is a main collector for us <coughs> where we need it to be wider. When we get to the residential streets, there's our collector seats, side streets, you don't have to have as much width. So what history can tell us, I'm not saying it's right or wrong, different periods of time have different kind of design standards. Back in the area where Mr. Lowry lives, it's more 23 feet. You get to Greenheart area, back in the house that were built in the 40s and 50s, those were more 26 and a half. Now we're back to the, to the 24, 25, 26s. That is the state energy standard going across. Council just really within the past four months approved road width variance or DRA, I say, say variance, a road width for 24 feet to DR Hort. So this guy's gonna be two feet wider than that. With parking limited on one side, it's gonna be a lot more accessible than what you see now because we have permit parking on both sides of the streets. So very, very great analogy. Things are to be different. Basically, namely by that one-sided parking. And then two, just each area of town has their different widths. This is basically about averaging where we need to be. Not small like Fenwick, but not as large as Lake. But again, also we have to do how we classify these type of roads. And again, I just want to stress Lake, Main Street, those are our main collectors, wide streets. The more you get to the residential, the less wide they need to be. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we will plan with the city's approval Thank you. sign Thank you. one side of the street, no parking, fire lane, generally the, the fire hydrant side, the, Waterline side is how that's done. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the standards of, of distance is for all of those signs, but we'll certainly follow what is a uniform uh, uh, traffic line for the time. It's three or four feet. Right. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Rob. Sir. I said thank you. Okay. Richard Fisher, 1102 North Scott. A um, couple questions I had were from. 
first, the uh, is Scott Street itself going to be white? Am I going to lose frontage or anything? The sidewalk and everything is going to be the same. I thought, I'm aware of it. It's yeah. going to just be, yeah. All right. I, and then uh, the grading, how's that going to work? Because there's that hill right there. And if they keep that hill, cars are going to end up jumping that and coming into New Carlisle. That, uh, I don't know. It's, that'd, that'd, be, that'd be a question for the service director who's not here right now. Question. Something about grading, a hill. How the grading is going to work because there's like three feet difference between the road and the field. Oh, I'm sure that I'm sure they'll grade that out. Grade out to to oh, okay. I'm sure there's, there's, yeah. there's, okay. there's, there's inclined requirements we got, but yeah, that'll be that'll be alleviated. Yes, and then uh, what about any loss of utilities <coughs> while they connect things? Because I mean, they got that wire, that flex bar is obviously going to be removed, right? Um, I, I'm not, road. we're not, uh, that's probably real too early in the plan to, right. to, to, to name that. And if you do, it would be a minimal outage, if any. You know, I'd say with gas and water, it wouldn't be, okay. Mm -hmm. And then my issue currently is the, uh, that brush. Is, I mean, I don't know if, I haven't been keeping up. Uh, is it annexed officially? Um, council did a pre-annexation back in earlier in the year. Right. Council, the county just approved it. They are introducing it uh, tonight, actually, to vote on it. And 1120. Okay, because if anybody else would have let their brush grow that high in their yards, they would have been cited by the board. It was really tacky seeing that all summer. Mm -hmm. All that brush, the ragweed got really tall. I can imagine if anybody had that ragweed allergies on drink, mm -hmm. we're suffering this year. Well, as of December 20th, I will be able to enforce that. Okay, so all right. Because it, it really should be. And that's if it passes uh, okay. on the 20th. Because it was really it sure. Tacky. I understand. We'll get in and address on the property. We just bought the property less than 30 days ago, so it's okay. still on by the former. That's why uh, Sweeper's name or Farge's name is still on it. Yes. All right. Because my concern too is on the map. When they listed all the property owners. Mine wasn't on there. They didn't list 1102. Scott, even though I'm affected by that one, that that north side. Uh, you, uh, you have to be within X amount of feet it would be triggered. Now I'm on the easement. Where are you at? Well, I'm North Scott. I don't know where this is. That's right at the end of the road. Uh, where is it at on here? That's yeah, right there. Okay. I'll look at it. You should have been notified of every address we've had. Okay. I've gotten the, the ad, I've gotten mailings. Okay, then that's that, that's what it is. It, okay. That's those mailings will tell you what when the what meeting, this is. meeting is, but they don't give me any more information than that, though. Well, right. So each each meeting has its own notification. So all the meetings we had before, you've got a letter for it. Right. But when the, mm -hmm. the house is on Drake, they got because uh, actually the house is owned by my dad. He was growing up, right? Mm -hmm. The house is on Drake. He got letters about Drake. He did not get a letter about letter two Scott. I I so, can't. I don't have any information in front of me. But how we okay. use a county GIS thing, we select your parcel we put a buffer on there and it selects all the address for it and we export it okay because it wasn't us and then after after the meeting can i talk to you okay great all right that's all i have yeah no problem thank Thanks. you mm -hmm. all right mr mayor sir i moved to accept the variance to 26 foot payment to payment for, for uh our second can you approve the overall site plan too, please? Yeah, can you just do it as the overall okay, site plan? Okay, I include the overall, overall site plan also. So motion, by Ms. motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Roadwell. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. No. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Robo. Yes. Seven, five, one. All right. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Bridge, I'm going to hand it back to you for the city manager's report. Oh, four, okay. with us on this so this is the city manager report for november 6th so this is a, a generally small manager report on the second meeting of the month we have all department heads here although i do got some stuff to go over with council so we have the uh, updates explanation rump waste management we still are on board to have those delivered the uh, rumpy containers the week of the 13th so they will be utilizing the uh, community garden uh, big old parking lot there 
Um, we did get letter from, we did get confirmation from waste management that they will be removing their carts. Um, what I am still waiting on is a release of property ownership. Should they not uh, catch all of their carts on that first pickup, which they won't, anything left after that, it gives Rumpke the ability to take that and destroy that cart. So again, to reiterate, we do got them having, that they do will remove their carts, but we do not have a letter really reaching ownership. I'm still working on that. But Rumpke's ready to move forward. The mailers, I think, started hitting houses already. The brochures, they look nice. We've updated the Facebook page to reflect that. Again, please look at your billing. If you have the opportunity to switch your service levels, you can save some money. Uh, Rumpke and Council did a good job at negotiating some prices, so we're actually seeing a reduction, um, um, which is beneficial for everyone. Um, so we also have the ordinance tonight, just kind of popped up out of nowhere. It's ordinance to accept the annexation from the county. So I just wanted to reiterate with that, I kind of already did. I just want to gently remind Council that pre that stemmed from the pre-annexation agreement that was passed on January 17th of 23, and that was ordinance 2023.05. It was a pre-annexation agreement, basically the contents of that legislation. He said these are the services that we are going to provide, fire, water, sewer, et cetera, et cetera. So um, what that did is triggered some uh, paperwork we've done at the county. What county did is they submitted us back the acceptance of that, uh, the approval of that September 5th, and we have to wait X amount of days before we can introduce that ordinance. It has to be uh, more than 60 days. Jay, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and since we've hit that 60 days, we can introduce it at the uh, tonight's meeting with a vote on the next meeting. What's different with this uh, legislation piece, it doesn't have a 15-day uh, waiting period for it to become effective. It has a 30-day waiting period to become effective. So um, next bullet point on any questions on that, Council? Nope. Okay, next bullet point, Addison, New Carlisle, State Road to Cut Through. Um, we had a meeting set. We had to reschedule that meeting uh, for um, uh, uh, unforeseen circumstances on both sides of the fence there. So I'll be meet with Mr. and Mrs. White again. Uh, that has to do with the city purchasing the land for the cut through and um, look at our options should they not want to sale and um, that will be discussed with council future down we just uh, pull out that traffic study look at our other options um, city council council retreat i have a city council discussion needed i have a question mark i know we always talked about having a retreat for council um, and doing at the first of the year to introduce them to the procedures that we go through I don't know where council's head at with that, but I kind of need to know so we can, I can start planning some stuff because we're really not that far away from the turn of the year. So that would need to be done in January should council want to have a retreat. Just or off the top of my head, I think one. maybe yeah. it would be better to wait till the new council's seated because yeah. you're going to have new mem you know, potentially a handful of new members. That was like, yeah, when we talked about the retreat before, it was to educate them, like to show them all the stuff. Right, but right, right. That's up to you guys. We'll do whatever. We'll give them whatever documents they need to get by. But it's really up to you guys. Any feedback? I won't be here. <laughs> Just saying. I think that, Mr. Mayor. Sir. I think that might be a, a good plan, but I agree with the mayor that we probably should wait till the next council is seated okay. and maybe bring that up at the first meeting uh, in January. If, if time allows, because then we'll have swearing ins and whatnot. Uh, so I think if, if we can put that off till the first meeting in January and then set something uh, maybe in March. Is that okay with you, Mr. Bridge? Oh, absolutely. Council? Let's make notes. All right. So we're going to mention it first meeting. Because you'll probably want to get, you know, with everybody that may be elected. Sure. Uh, different schedules and stuff oh i'm busy till the end of the year i'm fine with that <laughs> we're good all right so next bullet point number of contracted deputies for 2024 maybe this is a little immature because i don't think we got that far in the budget work session tonight but i would yeah. like to entertain adding a sixth deputy to our police force um what that's going to look like it is probably going to cost around maybe 120 a year for a deputy and that's just for wages and benefits might want to throw another 13 14 on it if you want to lease a car opposed to buy it so about 100 and 35 or 40 give or take 5k we can have a six deputy you mm -hmm. know what that looks like is clearly improves the schedule we have five now um i'm a firm believer in with that particular line item says it is levy funded 0.5 percent of our citizens tax tax money go into that you should have somewhat of a healthy balance to carry over but i think at some point in time you should use that to its full extent mm -hmm. so if we're carrying over four or five hundred thousand a year consistently let's look at adding that other deputy because now we can look at it that deputy is also going to be out on the road too, making our streets safer so when we get to that budget and line item where we get to that next we're going to set another work session that's something i definitely want council to entertain All right 
Um, additional bu bu uh, budget work session needed, so we need a motion on that. Let me pull out my calendar. Um, we kind of want to have it done sooner rather than later because we do want to introduce the budget at the first meeting in November. And that will give us a first read in November, second read, the first meeting. I mean December. Meeting in December. Because we already passed the first of <laughs> November. This is the first meeting in November. I'm sorry. It's the second meeting in November. Sorry. <laughs> what year are we We want to introduce it the second meeting in November with a vote on it with the first meeting in December. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. If the shelter house is booked, can we have it here, Fire Chief? I'm sure you don't mind. Anything for you. I prefer it here so we have the TV. Here, good man. Yeah, it, Randy, it would be nice to have it here because oh, of that. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Be for that. Clint Eastwood. I think the acoustics are way better. True. So is, is everyone okay with maybe the 13th? It's fine with me. You want to do the time you want to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'd be a week from today. That'll give us time to go back and change, make all the changes um, in the system and all that stuff. I put it out a later day. We can't do it Tuesday because I got a planning board meeting that evening. I'll be out of town till the 15th. I'll be home the 15th. Okay, so let's look at the 15th. Okay, so we have the 16th. I'm fine with the 16th. Well, Colleen's. What? Do you say you're going to be back the 15th? Yeah, I'll be home. Yeah, I'll be home. I'll be out of town that whole day on the 16th. What about on the 17th? I'm free. I will punch you in. I'm not. I got a board meeting. What about Wednesday the 15th? Um, yeah, I can do the 15th. Yeah, I can do the 15th. Gosh, 15th? Do you want to do 6 or do you want to do a little earlier? I know Ben. 5.30 would be the earliest that would be. Would you rather do 6, though? I can do 5.30. Okay, 5.30. All right. That's on the 15th, sir. 15th, 5.30 at the fire station. We need a motion for that. So moved. Second. Hold on, I missed it all, sorry. The 15th at 5.30 here at the firehouse. Yeah. Yep. Mr. Lindsay and second by, we'll go with Miss Eggleston. <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you're ready, Miss Brunner. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Councilman Robold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. All right. Pass the 6-0. Thank you. And that work session, we'll just go through it until the budget's over? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, additional discussion topics, I didn't have anything to add. So we'll upcoming legislation, again, housekeeping, Clark County, EMA, Fire and Mass Department. We're going to get that introduced. It's going to be a resolution. What are we going to do for this meeting? But I want the fire chief to be actually at the, officially at the next one. So we'll do that next. Uh, ordinance to accept codification update. It's been on there for a minute. I'm still waiting to hear back from the company that we to, to, to that we hired to do that. Um, we're still waiting to hear back from that. I know the total cost is around 12K. But what they do is they send us an actual piece and we have to accept all the changes. Uh, 2024 sheriff's contract and of course the operating budget which again uh, we'd like to introduce on 1120 with a second vote on december 4th all right. well, i have to see manager report all right council any questions for mr bridge yes mr vice mayor to amend the rules of council it requires a resolution correct it does mm -hmm. and to amend an ordinance it takes another ordinance correct it does mm -hmm. yes do you need a motion to prepare those no, each individual council member can actually introduce legislation. The only stipulation with that is you have to put your name on it. So if I think if you want to introduce something, you'll just call Jake or call me and we can help you facilitate that. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I had one. I know Mr. Kitko left, so you won't have an answer, but could you just, um, at the, one of the last meetings, I'm not sure if you were there, we were discussing some of the old equipment behind the hut yes. that needs to get on Gov's de mm -hmm. Gov deals, and he said he would try and get yep. that moving. Can Brian you? is working on that, so he's going to start actually, I think, this week, both posting stuff. Okay, great. Talk to him about that today, actually. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, I think that's all I had. Anyone else? All right. Such low hanging fruit over there we can take care of. Yes. You know? All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bridge, as always. Committee reports done tonight. Uh, number nine, uh, comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please. Um, we'll, do you still want them up front? Or? Uh, no. For the, if you're just here to couple of comments, you can stand up. Just We do need the name and address. Yeah, so I, if you have any questions, the, comments, all the above. Officially just, on the agenda up there. Yeah, just stand up. We'll need your name and address. 
All right. Moving on uh, to resolutions. Ms. Burner, if you would, please. All right. We have resolution 2023-17R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the city of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training required by the Ohio Public Records Act. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Evans. Please fill this. Please fill it. I don't want to go. <laughs> it's so important. I'm teasing, by the way. Did you Somebody want, asked, did you want to go over it? Oh, yeah, sorry. So an explanation of this ordinance. So the state of Ohio requires all elected officials to take yearly sunshine law trainings. And what that sunshine law training is is basically how we have to operate as government officials. Basically what we have to disclose in public records, the et cetera, that, how they do their council meetings, how they hold them. Uh, basically it just sums up how they do it. Uh, the state also allows them to pass legislation to allow a designee to go, which is usually me. Um, so I go and I report back to them their findings. To be honest and be fair, most of it deals with um, aspects of the uh, job that the administration deals with, and a very small percentage of it deals with actually how council should uh, actually operate. So that's why they have me go. Yes. Thank you, sir. Very council, cool. any discussion, questions? When you're ready, Ms. Burner? What? Did you have something? I had a question for Mr. Bridge. Or possibly you if somebody wanted to go they could go attend Absolutely. with you correctly okay yep. just wanted to clarify that thank, thank you. you thank you thank you, sir. Thank you. when you're ready miss burner uh, councilman lindsey yes councilman rodwell yes mayor lowry no <laughs> i'm just trying to help you thank you <laughs> yes councilman Vaughn. Peggy, please yes all. councilman eggleston no <laughs> <laughs> it was close. It was so two. close. <laughs> All right, moving on. Ordinance 2023-55 introduced on November 6th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city oh, yeah. manager to enter into a contract for insurance with USI Insurance Services LLC representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. Council. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Rodwell. Uh, next page of this ordinance. Um, this is a yearly housekeeping ordinance that we do. It has to deal with um, our liability insurance. We've been with the same company for a while. Um, I have a great relationship with them. So we usually have seen an actually reduction of premium. Um, this year we did see a slight increase, but due to the relationship, we actually got a longevity credit. So we are saving about $18 million. Thank you. Any discussion, Council? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner? Okay. Councilman? Place Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. That passes 6 0. Moving on to Ordinance 2023 56. This was introduced on October 16th. Uh, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance <coughs> authorizing the city manager or the director of public service assistant city manager to enter into a consultant agreement with Choice One Engineering for decorative streetlight LED upgrade project. PID number 118645. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Ms. Eggleston. So next to this ordinance, so the city and ODOT will be entering to uh, upgrade our uh, decorative LEDs. So this is just authorized the study for that. Um, ODOT will be paying 100% of the study. Um, but since we are entering agreement, we do need council approval. Thank you, sir. Council any discussion? When you're ready. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Pass the six zero. Moving on to ordinance 2023-57. This was also introduced on October 6th, 16th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending section 1040.18 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding water connection charges. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by myself. 
Uh, an explanation of this ordinance. So every few years, we kind of look at what we charge for our utilities, our water, wastewater, et cetera. Um, so we found out this particular year we <coughs> need an increase on in our water rates. However, our tap and fees were kind of outdated on their pricing. So we kind of looked at other cities <coughs> and price their tap and fees. And what we have in front of council a little bit tonight is one of those um, uh, results of that finding. So we will be introducing legislation and voting on it to increase tap and fees. Thank you. Good discussion. When you're ready, Ms. Berner. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwold. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. That is accepted 6 0. All right. The next two are read only. Ordinance 2023 58, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on November 20th. An ordinance accepting the annexation of 79.136 acres, more or less, from Bethel Township, Clark County, to the city of New Carlisle. Ordinance 2023-59, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on November 20th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for city employee health insurance. Um, and moving on to other business, open for discussion on city-related business. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Move we excuse Mr. Bond from the October 23rd meeting. Second. Second. Motion to excuse Mr. Bond from the said meeting and second thank you and said by mr lynn second by mr lindsay okay councilman roadwald yes mayor lowry yes vice mayor Grimm. yes councilman bond am i allowed to excuse no, myself just <laughs> <laughs> you were there. Sure. councilwoman eggleston yes <laughs> and councilman lindsay yes that passes five zero one mr mayor mr cook sir oh uh no not until the next meeting or do we do it? We can do it. Can we do it tonight? We can do it tonight. Okay. I, I move to excuse Mr. Cook from tonight's meeting. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay and a second by myself to excuse Mr. Cook from tonight's meeting. From the work session and the regular meeting? Correct. Yes, both. Okay. Thank you for the correction, ma'am. And Lindsay was the first. Yes. Who was the second? Me. Okay. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Redwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? <laughs> yes. Second 6-0. All right, moving on, we will be going into discuss or an executive session tonight to discuss the employment of a public employee. And for those of you that may not have been through one of these before, so what we'll do is we'll um, vote to go into executive session. Everyone will have to clear the room. Uh, we'll do our discussion about the public employee, then we will come back into regular <laughs> session. You can come back in if you would like after that. I, I don't know how long it'll take, hopefully not real long. And then um, I don't know if there will or will not be any business afterwards. I guess it just depends on how this uh, executive session goes. So, But you're welcome to wait around outside and come back when you're done. Sir, Chief. Well, I just wanted to announce to the council so that everyone knows in the city that as of 1800 tonight, six o'clock for normal time people, uh, we are no longer involved with elizabeth township all right thank okay. you sir thank you mr mayor sir move to adjourn go into uh executive session and discuss the appointment of every public employee thank you. get that out second by mr vice mayor we'll do a five minute break in between so everybody can stretch their legs or whatever councilman bond yes councilman eggleston yes councilman lindsey yes councilman roadwell yes mayor Lauer. yes vice mayor grant yes Motion to move to the next Mr. Mayor, move we go move go back into regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. <coughs> Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rubin? <coughs> yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Seven, six, zero. All right. So uh, would you Please read the ordinance 2023-6 for introduction tonight. Please. Yes. Yeah, okay. An ordinance yeah, approving. Do you think I break rules first to introduce it? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Mayor, move to break rules of council. <laughs> Second. First by Mr. Second by Mr. Roadwater, break rules of council to introduce new legislation. legislation. Okay. And who was the first? first? I mean, Lindsay Roadwall. Okay. <clears throat> it's a new law firm. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodwell. Yes. 
Motion to break rules of council passes six zero. Okay. All right. Do we want to see if anybody's out there to come back in? Yeah, I got Peggy. Just in case. Oh. Watch your shin. That's gonna be to lose some weight. Jesus, man. We all do, buddy. We all do. Yeah, you speak for yourselves. <laughs> I keep moving away a little bit in the colors. I'll introduce Ordinance 2023-60, an ordinance approving an employment agreement with Randy Bridge. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, yes. Moved to no, adjourn. No, I had a question. Or I had oh, something okay. to adjourn. I apologize. <laughs> I should have done this under city manager's report. I apologize, Randy, real quick. In the past, I know that, and I forget how we've done it, because I know <laughs> the city can't give uh, its employees, per se, bonuses, correct? Didn't we? Haven't we done that before? Yeah, I think we did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, we did with COVID. We did, no, we did it with the BWC funds. We had yeah. we got a refund of the BWC funds. That's why we did. It. Okay. Well, my question is, is COVID. Um, but can we do it out of our own funds? I mean, if you guys allocate it, what, what kind of bonus were you looking? What I'm wanting to ask we should is, have, can we? I see what you're saying, but I think we should probably wait until we have the budget work session. Because I don't. I mean, we can okay. do whatever. Okay. I just don't know what that's going to be. Because well, it probably come for the general fund. Well, Ideally, what do you think? It would be time sensitive for the holiday. Oh, that's fine. What do you think? I mean, I would just. How many employees we got? Are you, what are you looking to do? Full time? Because last time it was just full time employees because that had to do with the BWC refund. So it wouldn't I would be, like to. What I was getting at is I'd like to see coming into the holiday, I'd like to see if you guys thought it was a good idea to give the employees like. 102. I mean, if, if you want just the straight full time employees, that's only 18. But then you've got our fire station for people. But I, I, I'm not going to put that in there. I wouldn't. Um, 18. I figured a couple 100 bucks, 200 bucks of, Whatever you guys of a bonus want. for the holiday. I just think it would be a nice gesture. What about 250 for full time, 100 for part time? Well, part time, what are you going to find part time? Because we got a lot of part time pool people that work 10 hours a week. Yeah, but they're not, they're no longer employees well i mean that's so do you want to classify the current employees then yeah yeah i would do a team but it's no longer for the city. i would just do full -time employees. The fire department how many employees do we have full-time right now currently oh, 18. Oh, oh. 18 18 oh, more than that i thought it was like 18 or 19. No, we got more than that it's probably you just not, not much more not much. okay so you just well, not more so it's maybe 20 21 because that's clear okay. administration but i don't need that um the reason i ask and to clarify that part-time is because we got some people on the pay on the fire schedule that is done one won't run I don't think someone who's worked here for five hours gets a check. Right. I don't. So I think is it a full minimum time. hour? Like if you have minimum, I think with BWC how we looked at it was full time, full time. No minimum more. time maybe. But however, if it's a part time, you had to average so many hours in order to qualify. Or what about time? Like that they've been here for X amount of years. You have to be here five six months. I mean, because yeah, you got to have one person on the, on the fire schedule that's been here for five years and done one shift a year and one shift a week. So it gets just, it just gets. I just do full time. Just do full time. Well, that's up to that's you what guys. you said. Okay. Full time and full cleaner that way. It just, you know, I just don't want to upset It's Chief. cleaner that way. Oh, yeah. Chief, Chief would be included because he, we, we essentially He's full time. Full -time. But I mean, his, yeah. some of his people. Some and I got to be careful what I say for obvious reasons. I'm but. saying, so you, so council wants it, I can do some look at that, like on the last payroll Excel sheet, see what we got, and I'll let you guys see that <laughs> after we've done these hours. You, guys, you don't want to. I think with the BWC, we think we cut it off for hours here, and they still got something, but it wasn't the full amount that full-time people got. That's I remember going through that. Well, I, I was saying that was the end result. Okay. Well, okay. Either way, whether it's full, half. I mean, what do you guys? I mean, money, money wise too. I mean, I, I'm just throwing ideas. Backwards. What dollar amount are you comfortable giving away? I, I oh. think I think two fifty, twenty grand for for <laughs> per employee or total. Total. We asked total. Twenty grand. Well, I don't know. Wow, that'd be what a huge. Would, that, that would be. That would be yeah. huge. That's total. total. That's still a lot. Sorry, sorry, go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. Two fifty crap. Uh, that's five grand. I, I think two fifty per full time employee. Man, let me go through this. I can tell you right now. Uh, would be sufficient. Well, yeah, the uh, I don't know if you want to hit. If you want to hit the fire department, if you want to include those in there, because I don't. I never felt right uh, eliminating somebody if they're doing if they're on the department. If you want to give each one of them a hundred bucks, that I, would be. I I I'm not to interrupt you, but that's just tough to do. But the fire department. 
I think it's an hour cutoff because we hire so many people in, they may get one shift. That's what I'm saying. It's with the fire department, it's going to be tough with those people. It's also up to you guys, but I think you got to explain to yourself someone who's someone who's made that full time, who works a lot of hours for us, who gets the same amount as someone who only works a shift every two weeks. Well, then just make make the shift every two weeks. Half of that, make it, you know, and if they're full time, they're here all the time. Give them the hundred bucks. If they're only here one day a month, I don't think they deserve it. <laughs> give, them, give them a quarter. Right. No, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm a candy time. bar. Huh? You got to understand. That I they're, think here, just, they're only here one day a month because they're giving their priority to other departments. Yeah, I think we should just stick to the right. straight full time employees. And and basically, cause we don't have any full time fire department employees except for the chief. Am I correct on that? Chief and the assistant. Is the chief it. the chief isn't full? Is the assistant chief isn't full time. Is Another it? thing you can do it like this, just throwing it out. You can say this is what we're giving for full time people. We're giving a chunk of change to fire chief to see how he wants to hand it out to his people on his own. Do it that way. There you go. go. So you want to give X amount of dollars to your full time. You want to leave a right. 5K pot for the fire department. He can handle it. He can hand it out how he fits. Uh, that, 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 way, that way it's I, on I, him, I, not us. Yeah. I don't, I'm, just, yeah. I'm presenting ideas for you guys. I don't, so, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That's a lot of discretion for fire chief. It's a lot of discretion for fire chief. But, uh, he, but, he, but do you need a, um, we don't have to do this in the form of a uh, motion. resolution or anything, do we? No, because I would take a motion on this. You need a motion. Oh, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. But I mean, it doesn't need to be drafted up. And, no, I think we don't pick it back on the 13th. That way we have all the budget numbers there. Is that okay? I just I, you I want, to, I want them to get month. it before Christmas. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, it may, I mean, we talk about it on the 13th. It's all if, we, if we're going to do payroll it this week, we hold on, let me payroll this week. Payroll Next week, December, AP. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll worry about it. If, we'll, if we we'll, introduce we'll it tonight, it then at the next meeting we can vote on it. You'd, we'd vote on the 13th budget work session, and then we'd put it in the budget. Then you would vote, then the budget would vote on. Right. Um, but here's the deal. Here's another flip side of this. We haven't allocated any money for this. So unless <laughs> Colleen can pull a little bit of there, there, now we have to do a supplemental. See what I'm saying? It'll yeah, but it's not a dramatic amount of money. Let's just say it was, well, let's, I just know say it was let's just say for conversation's sake, it's 20 people that's full time for conversation. It's, and it's 200 bucks. And you're talking two grand. That's easier compared to 20K. That's well, what you have. if you do it's like a big one. Oh, yeah. Dan, Dan saying, was we being, he was on drugs when he said that or something. And then if we want to put oh, oh, more, we have to look at, Colleen may yeah. just look at, we may have to look at each fund, like the wastewater department pays theirs, the water department pays theirs, you know, instead of the general fund just taking it. But we'll look at that. Realistically, though, can we get it done before Christmas? Oh, I can make anything happen as long as we have timing for the legislation part of things. I mean, the motion side of things. So again, what I think you should do is yeah, talk about sense. this on the 13th. Um, really, at the 13th, we'll know. I'll have a gauge of what you guys want to do with it. Can you and or, or, or whether you want one of us to do it, talk to Chief about what your suggestion was? Um, I, I should do that. Yeah. To be respectful yeah, of the, thank you. the um, um, former Chief government we have. And that'd be for you guys to decide. I mean, it, it was just an idea for me. If I had to critically think about it, that was a good that's idea. A lot is discretion, yeah. though, for one person to come up with. I think he should have some sort of guidelines. Um, what those? They're going to be very loose guidelines, you know. But I think there is. There would be a concern talking to him last time when we did we did, we did the BWC raises. Like I said, someone who's part time but works a lot versus someone who's technically part time who barely works. Right. They can't right. get the same amount. Uh, cool. That's all I had. But I love the idea. Yeah, for sure. I know we did a few years back. I just, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a sucker at Christmas time. Aren't we all? So, you Me know. Too. That's why I was so, Mr. Are, are you going to. Are you being serious? Mike. Ma'am. So, you going to give counsel a bonus too? Kids. I don't think that's legal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. You're going to have mine. I'm just kidding. I don't need one. All right. So, we'll do it okay. later. So, yeah. do I have a motion Mr. to. Mr. Mayor, motion to what? Adjourn? Adjourn. Or? Yes, you got it. Second. second by you Mr. Vice seconds. Second by the Vice Mayor. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Rubble. Yes. Councilman Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grant. Yes. Mr. Dirt 7 Thank you.